Back in Bathurst Island's main township of Newey, I meet other Tiwi Islanders. The youngsters are an exuberant and free-spirited lot. There are less than 2,000 Tiwi Islanders with a language and culture all of their own, completely different from the mainland Indigenous Australians less than a 30-minute flight away. Their pets include families of pigs that roam the streets freely. And tame dingoes. This one sauntered up to me as I sat on a veranda. First he wouldn't come up to me, now I'm worried he's going to bite my head off. Down the road, I find a group of Tiwi Island women singing and working together outside a house. Men are banned here. The women just like to spend time with each other. And it's productive time too. They're working with the long leaves of the pandanus plant, which they've dried and coloured with natural dyes. The products they weave will be sold on market days to visiting tourists. Not that there are many visitors here. The Tiwis are well off the beaten track, which is why the culture of the Tiwi Islanders has remained so intact. For starters, there are their ceremonies. This one we could film, but most we can't. Even white settlers who have lived closely with the Tiwi Islanders for years are banned. Those sacred ceremonies are strictly for Tiwi Islanders only. Ceremonies staged at times of initiation and death. The art of body painting has been practiced for thousands of years. Traditionally, the Tiwi paint their bodies for ceremonies using natural earth pigments known as ochres. This tradition of mark making is the foundation for modern Tiwi art. Harry, our film neck lizard catcher, explains that the specific style of face painting he's wearing today is exactly what his father and grandfather wore. It's very um, fascinating for us, uh, for the Tiwi people, and for myself as well. What does this mean? What do these paintings mean on your face? Oh, it's, it's actually a special meaning what uh, we actually uh, get it from our father's side. And um, we, we actually have that uh, until we actually get to an older age and we still have that dream and that pass on to generation and generation. Once their faces are painted, there's a smoking ceremony. Branches of small bushes set alight to drive out evil spirits. Then there's the traditional dance. Dancing, or yoy as it's called in the Tiwi dialect, is a part of everyday life on the Tiwi Islands. Different dances are performed for different reasons, from spontaneous performances at celebrations to more structured movements for ceremonies. These totemic dances are passed down from their mother because the Tiwi Islanders to this day are all classified by different skin groups. Repeatedly in my time in the Tiwis, I witnessed exactly how important this is in everyday life. What it means is that once they reach puberty, brothers and sisters can no longer speak to one another, ever. You cannot talk to your mother-in-law or you cannot talk to your sisters as well. Now why is that? Uh, it, it's a special way that we actually can't talk to them. Because, uh, for our mother-in-law, uh, we don't actually talk to her because it's what we got from her. Uh, we actually feel shame and guilt. Uh, uh, their daughters is what we married to. Uh, it's like giving promise to us. So this, uh, the only contact we don't have is, is to our mother-in-law and to our sisters. And Harry, why can't you talk to your sister? Uh, well, it's to stop in us inbreeding. Uh, so there's no relation between brothers and sisters. I don't uh, actually make contact with them or direct look. Uh, I have to put my head down or just face another way. And um, I know it's very hard for us not to talk to our sisters because it's just the culture that we have here on the island. And that's for life. You can never, ever, ever talk to no, your sisters. No, you cannot talk to your sisters forever. Art is another very strong component of the Tiwi way of life. Many buildings are adorned with highly stylized paintings. Every panel on this big building on the waterfront at Nui is painted. Many panels featuring the sea creatures of the Tiwis, from turtles and crocodiles to fish and crabs. 
particularly sacred are the burial poles, commissioned by the family of the deceased. Burial sites known as Pukamani are taboo to non-Tiwis, meaning we were banned from filming poles like this in their cemeteries. Instead, we filmed these in the Bathurst Island Museum. Elaborately carved and painted, they celebrate the life of the person who has died. The Tiwi Islanders may not speak the name of dead people. These days, art in the Tiwis is very much alive. Here's the Aboriginal Sistine Chapel. Huge panels of crosshatch designs painted right onto the ceiling, representing different family groups in the Tiwis. This is the Narawani Deary Art Cooperative, where 14 Tiwi artists with disabilities paint side by side, creating an impressive collection of paintings. Their work is inspired by Tiwi body art. Narawani Deary is a Tiwi word meaning helping one another, with artworks from here becoming part of private collections in Australia and overseas. It's inspiring to see how their art has evolved because the Tiwi were isolated for so long that they are very different to the Aborigines on the mainland. So different, in fact, that the Tiwis knew neither the didgeridoo nor the boomerang and for thousands of years believed they were the only people on earth. One relatively new influence on their lives is the church. Today, we're at the open-air Catholic church, St. Teresa's. It's Palm Sunday. Such a delicious mix of TV traditions and Vatican holiness. On this day also the church celebrates a pilgrim walking their life as young Christians, as young believers. Next, a parade of parishioners. Most Tiwi Islanders these days are Christians. A long way from the days, tribes of Tiwi Islanders took to their canoes to steal women in raids on the mainland. Despite the influence of the church, the Tiwi Islanders have kept many aspects of their traditional culture, especially their art and crafts and clan dances. Today's service culminates in the glorious massed voices of the Tiwi congregation. Coming episode of Travel Oz, we'll be back to the Tiwis for the mother of all celebrations, their annual Aussie Rules Grand Final.